Daniel, are there anything that you'd like to share about uh, your concerns about the trip? We know it's the wrong time of year. We know it's the wrong boat. We know we're not skilled sailors. That's right, Daniel. <laughs> so, when we go down, I don't want people saying these guys are idiots. We know we're idiots, so therefore we're not idiots. That's my rationale. That's our... It's what we've got to work with, and the whole idea of this trip is to inspire other people to suicidal actions as well. This is a story about three good friends, Dan, Dennis, and myself. A dream of sailing down the Pacific for three months in a really small boat. And a documentary of the entire experience. I've called it Reaching Reality. A story of a really cool adventure and the discovery of a dream. Are you recording my little friend? <laughs>I want to get so like you know, you know we'll start I want to get around this is this is a good start going from harbor to harbor and having power and being relatively warm and having not having to deal with anchoring and not having to deal with the inflatable because we're just trying to get around conception because that's the big change in the weather and you know safety and stuff like that you know northern central California is a different deal no oh, so you're just shooting shooting for conception yeah basically the goal is to get around point conception as soon as we can to this point it had taken nine months of work and preparation to get our tiny little boat ready for exit out the golden gate and into the pacific that was my first night aboard this small little boat give me an idea i am now standing up and in standing up i can't really stand up Ah, excitement. <laughs> no, it's really happening. For the moment, there were only two of us, with one coming in Santa Barbara. Between here and there, we had 300 miles to go and two major stretches of land to get around. Daniel has been charting our course for the next three days in hopes that we pass through this uh, stretch of land without any issues with the weather. We got our first 24-hour voyage coming up. In our first days out to sea, we found a good window in the weather, and the days were calm and beautiful. We were now someplace between our dream of adventure and the reality of sailing the Pacific. Vessel Rhino calling Santa Cruz Harbor Master's office over. From San Francisco, we sailed down the coast through safe harbors, heading toward the rounding of Big Sur and Point Conception. Monterey, around, and then this the run to Conception. Over the past four nights, we'd stopped in Half Moon Bay, Santa Cruz Harbor, and we were now in our last marina of Monterey Bay. As we prepped to depart for our voyage around Big Sur and Point Conception, there was a sobering tone. Tonight we got a 24 hour journey around Big Sur down to Morro Bay. In the next couple of days, we'd be coming out of the darkness and anchor just north of Santa Barbara in a spot called The Ranch. Stein, what's going on over there? Right. Steiner. Stein. How, where did this idea of the sailing trip come from? <laughs> the sailing trip spurred out of the original trip, the trip, the drive down to Costa Rica. The trip down to Costa Rica uh, started, I don't know, it, I think it was a bar room night where it, someone said it'd be cool to do this. And I think Dan, it was Dan probably that said it, and he said, I'm going to do this. I think Hughes may have said it. I think Hughes said something about sailing a boat around oh, yeah. to the islands on the on the east side, though. Yeah. The Caribbean. The sail trip, yeah. So originally, yeah. I said it'd be cool just to have a boat and sail around the islands and just stick around for some time. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. guess 
Dan got him. Dan, <laughs> then Dan bought a boat. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, really, then Dan bought a boat. Allow me, if you will, a moment to back up and fill in some gaps. In 1999, I moved from a small town in Michigan to L.A. and lived on a sailboat. Shortly after I arrived, I met Dan and Dennis, along with a handful of other friends. In a short time, the three of us began to lead impulsive, unplanned, and unbridled trips by car down to Mexico or up to Northern California. These trips led to a three-month drive through Central America, ending in Costa Rica. Now, after Costa Rica, things started to come apart, and the three of us split up. Dan moved to San Francisco to be with his girlfriend, Adrian. I moved to Santa Cruz for work and surf, and Dennis remained solo in L.A. This is from a sailing magazine, not even a surf book. He wasn't trying to find surf, but look what he reveals. Wrapping point. Tent is situated right on the point there. Little 24 foot island, Bahama anchored off the side. Sheltered to the other side. <laughs> so to this point, there are three friends, a boat, and an idea for a trip. What I need to decide is what am I gonna tell what am I gonna tell my administrator? And I think the limit that I'm going to tell my administrator is a month. From here, we would each start to map out a course for how our lives would change and what we would need to sacrifice to go. This is a metal cutting tool being used as a super sandpaper machine. We are ready. In addition to our personal lives, we'd each need to learn how to sail, and to do that, we'd need to get a boat seaworthy enough to go sailing. Time to clean up. Get the f out of here. Another day is done. I'm worked. Another project. Another project complete. As we inch closer over the nine months, we'd continually be faced with choices and challenges to overcome. How do you feel about me leaving on the trip? Uh, I don't like it. However, every choice came back to two things remain back in the order of the lives that we knew, or go forward into the chaos of the unknown. Adrian, how do you feel about this trip? Now's not the time for anything. Good, that's exactly what we wanted to know. Now we know exactly how to do it. It's going to be hard. The trade-off for it all was the dream of traveling 1,200 miles by sea to search out seven islands for beaches and uncharted surf. Here it is, San Francisco, Point Conception, LA, Ensenada, El Rosarito, Punta Eugenia, to the tip of Cabo. So Dan's talking about departure. Tomorrow morning, February the 17th. As the clock ticked down towards departure, the largest concerns were the unanswerable questions that come with any adventure. I, I think that my biggest concern about this trip is my transition back. To masculinity? Sexuality? What? what transition what type? back after the trip. Yes. Back into, I'll, I'll, move, I'll be coming back without a job, without a lot of money, without a place to stay for the most part. And no woman. I just posed the question to Bowski, are there many people? I'm genuinely excited right now about the prospect of exploring in this raging gale, pouring rain, cold ass temperature in our tiny little inflatable. This is the happiest I've been all day. We've been sitting snug in the warm in the morning, dickering back and forth about how fucked up we each are, and now, finally, I'm excited. We're doing something. The, the excitement that Daniel shares is somewhat mutual. However, it has not come down this hard all night or all day until just now. It is really fucking coming down. Really fucking coming down. Over the past two weeks since our departure, we traveled south from San Francisco around Point Conception to an anchorage north of Santa Barbara called The Ranch. Getting audio. Somewhere up there is the ranch, boys. During those two weeks prior, we'd spent the majority of our trip 
in and out of marinas, transitioning from one painful reality of sailing to the comforts of a marina. Hot shower. <laughs> Hot shower just had a fish and chip dinner. Got the electric heater running, lights. Yeah, it's, this is just the adventure everyone wanted to see. Now awaiting Dennis's arrival, we were stalled between Santa Barbara, the ranch, and the Santa Cruz Islands, and our pace had slowed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna be sick of this in about 20 minutes. <laughs> in addition, we were full in the center of winter, which left most anchorages exposed to rough seas and the elements of rain and wind. Well, we are charging into the great unknown of the Santa Cruz Islands. We're soon to beach our little dinghy here on the land and destroy the motor and end the trip. These conditions left us with a choice to either go outside and suffer in the cold of the elements or remain locked inside and avoid it all. It is fucking rainy as hell. The whole experience was driving emotions within me that I did not want to deal with. It's a beautiful day at the ranch. We've had a lot of fun. It's a shame that I haven't been able to film more of it. Hopefully we'll get more on tape. The suffering and the struggle were a constant series of highs and lows. Fuck. Fucking shit. Oh, fuck it. <gasps> Full of conflict, I was also struggling with the film. Well, Daniel and I decided, well... Don't fucking Daniel and I. I saw you paddling that fucking dinghy towards shore, and I said, this is the dumbest thing Can you thing watch I've your language? See. Can you watch your language? At some level, I had to take... At some level, I had to say, Barry, I haven't shot anything offshore. I've been telling myself I'm going to shoot it offshore. So I'll wait till we get to I need pool. tripod shore shots. And the biggest set of the day comes through, and me and Dan are trying to get out. Flips the fucking dinghy. Anchor set, I start screaming, Where's the, the, the camera? Dan gets to the dinghy, flips it over, and the fucking case is floating on top of the water underneath the dinghy. And while I lost my tripod, let's have a moment of silence. $4,000 in camera equipment saved in a waterproof Pelican case. Thank you, Mr. Pelican. All right. Nearly losing my camera in the surf, I debated often on quitting the entire thing. I have to believe in myself. I lost that thing today and I said, what am I doing? What in the Sam fucking hell am I doing? Why am I doing this? It was a real, I had a big desire to fucking quit. I still Because of the tripod? Oh yeah. Like this is fucking stupid. You gotta fucking have your mind more made up, dude. I've arrived in Santa Barbara. Daniel is supposed to be sitting on my left, my port side, but he's not. I'm he, coming. He's now coming in on my starboard side. He's crossing. Bowski's already crossing, got the jargon now. Crossing, he is passing my Bas bow and he's heading to my port. <laughs> yes, Bowski got it down. I struggle with on this trip. My a couple things. Is one of them. His Daniel's nudity. I will not stand you, around. I will change naked. Stand. I will piss in front of Daniel. I will shit in front of Daniel for short periods of time. But Daniel will get naked for and, and hang out on the boat for hours. Tell, I got a fucking sponsor of the day. Adjustable clamps, stainless steel little C clamps, probably four or five inches. One of the most valuable uses, right here, Barry. Let me get him on the lips. <laughs> See, clamp that mouth shut. If I have to hear one more fucking bullshit about, there we go. We had now been traveling aboard the boat for nearly three weeks. During that time, Dan had remained a steady rock of forward momentum, while I struggled with the idea of staying on board for the entire trip. I keep hearing you say, "This is going to be. This is going to be an incredible experience. This is going to be. We're eight days into it." Have you not been enjoying what you've been doing so far? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I have. I, I've got mixed feelings on it all. Now we had traversed the coast from San Francisco down to Santa Barbara, exploring beaches and islands along the way. Chili con queso, an essential item. 
peanut butter, also an essential item. Things you need to survive while it's... Finally, we were back in the marina, preparing, resupplying, and waiting for the arrival of Dennis before heading south towards Catalina Island and into Mexico. The arrival of Dennis Stein to the good ship Lollipop. Just set it down. The cat boss. <laughs> Perfect. Barry. <laughs> hey boys. So this is the situation. There, two of us might be able to sleep up there. All right. Dan, Dan, Dan has been sleeping here, but Dan had slept here in this spot. And this cat, what? How does he sleep there? Oh, his feet can go underneath. There. Yeah. That is bigger than it looks. And uh, me and you might consider sleeping there, and uh, the only thing that would, com would would run into each other is our feet. We really don't have a lot of feet, do we? It's fucking, wait until we're, you're out at sea. Dan, 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 Dennis, it's a different trip than you ever thought it was going to be. It's a different trip. So what is your biggest concern about those clouds on the horizon? I'm very concerned about lightning. It doesn't look like there's a lot of wind, but we're seeing probably half a dozen bolts of lightning. We are a lightning rod floating in the middle of the ocean. Did you know anything about lightning storm before we left? Yeah, we listened to the forecast and it said lightning. Likely impossible through Sunday. We want surf, so we sailed anyway. We now had all three members on board and were off crossing the Santa Barbara Channel towards our next destination of the Santa Cruz Islands. This is exactly what we had in mind when we thought about sailing the Caribbean for, <laughs> for places to surf. This is exactly what we had in mind. Hailstorms and fucking, uh, what is it temperature wise? What would you guess? 45 with one, one, 20, 10 knot winds just starting to come in. Designer, how do you feel about this? Designer doesn't know anything, so he's going to plead ignorance and say, we're going to outsail this storm. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you saw on camera that threw up once. There is a second time, but also to be included is the cameraman himself threw up twice. Neither time the camera was to be found. I find it. We'll get a reenactment. Yeah. I think Bowski throws up like me. Bowski throws up violently. Like fucking like a cat. His back goes <laughs> and then he twitches his arm. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating, like, that loud. <laughs> Snyder Moon kind of had a smile on his face. <laughs> I was expecting this. This is a good first night. <laughs> I'm ready for more, Captain. It is amazing how quickly things can change at sea, and how much can be lost within a day. We're freezing our balls off here, all three of us in wood suits. We just got out of the surf, in 50 degree water, and we decided to shoot over to this potato patch harbor. All <laughs> Daniel's doing the warm up dance. Starter's feet have turned blue. <laughs> this is what it's about. This is what true surfers do for surf. For us, that lesson came as a trade-off to surf after our risky yet successful crossing to the Santa Cruz Islands. That surf drove us late into the afternoon, and with darkness closing in, we were forced into a compromising anchorage. Oh, shit. First one to throw up? Yeah. Yes. I don't feel so hot myself. This might be too time in it. 
Stuck in a cove of waves, we were doomed to be tossed through the night, drifting towards the walls around us. It's gonna get worse before it gets better. It's gonna get worse through the evening, and then back off. I think we should probably ride it out. Like, not, and again, not, this isn't meant to sound as a criticism. I think you take for granted some of the stuff that I know could be a different way. You know it could be in a different way? Yeah. Like what? What could be in a different way? Like an anchor drag, like not having enough anchor line to put out enough scope, like having a flimsy anchor, like having shitty line. Well, no. See, the difference is, is, and, and don't get angry at me for saying this. The difference is, is if this fucking boat washes up on the beach, I go home. <laughs> <laughs> I pack my camera up and I fucking go home. Or if it fucking, you know. But for you, you fucking. Now well, there goes med school and you'll probably lose your relationship, probably never recover from something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Although I puked violently, I actually slept pretty good. After that second puke, my body had zero energy and shut down. I want to comment on the fact that Daniel hasn't shown any seasickness at all. Oh, that's not true. Well, he's, he hasn't violently puked, but I couldn't help but notice that his ego, his ego was puking all over the place this morning. <laughs> he felt pretty good about, no, I'm just trying to start shit, Dan. I'll take this into the confessional booth and tell you what I really think. <laughs> that was a good night. I think you were standing that second anchor line. Shut up, shut up. I asked if you needed help. If you said yes, I would have came up. If you're not enjoying it, why do it? Well, I wouldn't say I'm not enjoying it. Like, this really cool shit, but like... I just know that two years ago or a year ago, I went down the Baja by myself with a woman, and it was fucking amazing, and uh, I don't know, like... I miss doing, I miss my woman. And it's not as fun anymore with just the guys doing fucking guy shit. So why don't you drop out? I don't know. I, I've invested a lot into this thing. I've invested a lot in this film. If, you know, who knows? I might not make it the whole time. I might make it half of it. Who knows? We'll leave it at that. I'm not quite ready for, to make that decision.